Nas EBK started rapping in 2021 and quickly picked up some buzz in the game. But he's also known for being a wild dude who's constantly dissing the ops on social media and in the booth. A lot of people weren't sure how active he really was in the streets. But now, he's facing a murder charge after allegedly shooting a dude in one of the busiest places in the world. Let's get into what went down. Just a few weeks ago, Nas EBK was booked by the US Marshals over a YouTube prank. He linked up with his homie Bubba 100X to film a prank video at a local grocery store. And in the video, you can see him walking up to random people and screaming in their faces. At first, it looked like another pointless prank video. But then, Nas made the situation serious. He grabbed a hat from one of the store's employees, then told him, walk toward me again and I'll violate you. Instead of deleting the footage and keeping it moving, they posted everything and Nas ended up getting booked on possession of a weapon for unlawful purposes, simple assault, terroristic threats, and disorderly conduct. Getting arrested for a YouTube prank is bad, but it's nothing compared to the charge he's facing now. Earlier this week, Nas was booked on a second degree murder charge for allegedly shooting and killing the dude in Times Square on February 9th. According to reports, Nas got into an argument with a dude named Madrisa Sibby on the corner of 44th Street and 8th Avenue. Then, the situation got so heated that Nas allegedly upped the strap and shot Sibby in the chest. It's not clear if the shooting was caught on surveillance cameras, but a video came out showing Sibby running for help before he collapsed to the ground and tragically passed away. Nobody really knows what went down yet, but after the news broke, Nas hopped on IG and posted a pic that just said, Innocent, and captions it with, Only God can judge me. Be home soon. Free to gods. According to rumors, Sibby was affiliated with the YGs and that's why Nas had issues with him. Not much is known about Nas's early life, but he grew up playing basketball and wasn't always active in the streets. Eventually, he started hustling just to support himself, but he told Say Cheese TV. I was always money motivated. Mm -hmm. I was never trying to just be a hood nigga or trying to kill and be dirty and shit. That's not my type of party, bro. Yeah. Back in the day, he was just trapping for himself and wasn't claiming any sets. But that changed after his homies hit a lick on him. According to Nas, his friend set him up to rob him for a pound of weed. After that, Nas links up with dudes from Southside and DOA like K-Flock and set the trend and has been repping DOA ever since. The Bronx is one of the wildest places in the world. There's a lot of beef between different hoods, and Southside has issues with sets all over the city. Southside beefs with the YGs and the OGs, which used to be the same crew back in the day. But after some people at the top cross each other, they split into two crews that are still beefing today. Back in July 2021, a rapper named Ty Swish, who was allegedly affiliated with Sex Money Murder and cool with a lot of DOA members, was shot in the head and killed. A few days later, they allegedly clapped back and killed a 13-year-old crip named Jerry and Elliot, aka J Rip, after catching them outside a cafe in the Bronx. It was a brutal murder, but it only took a few hours for the other side to get back. A member from the 800 YGs named Rajis had allegedly clowned J Rip's death on social media, and just a couple hours later, he was shot in the head while getting into an Uber. Two shooters rolled up on him, and before he even had time to act, they was already letting off shots. Rod G's was one of Nas EBK's biggest ops. They was always sending shots back and forth, and it's rumored they actually went to school together back in the day. Even after Rod died, Nas kept sending shots at him. This in dead ops is a big part of drill, but obviously, most people ain't cool with it. One day, when Nas had court, Rod's girlfriend came up screaming at him, so Nas just spit right in her face. According to Nas, she knew he would be there and decided to ambush him. She allegedly had a bunch of other people with her too, but you can't see him in the video. A lot of people think Nas still dissing Ra two years after he died is getting weird. He's known for saying Ra Ra all the time, but he told Say Cheese TV that he has a good reason for it. According to Nas, Before he died, two days before he died, he said, I'm gonna kill you when I see you. That's the main reason why I was really going Ra Ra crazy. Around the same time Ra was killed, Nas decided to hop in the booth and start dropping drill tracks. He said that being a rapper wasn't ever something he wanted to do. But one day, he was chilling with Set the Trend in the studio, and Set convinced him to lay down a verse. Nas was already known for sending crazy shots at the ops on social media, and he went all out with the dissing and his music too. His first song was a track called Bunny in the Box, where he damn near took shots at the whole city. Nas says he knew he would be one of the most hated rappers in the city after a drop, so he just went as hard as he could with the disses. Nas opened the first verse by going at D-Thang and other YGs from an area called RPT or River Park Towers, the Drillies, and a set called 174th. He said, D-Thang a bitch. how you smoking on Diddy? When I catch you, I'm making it litty. She from the T's, but she popping her 
I spent 4 Sev trying to catch me a drilly. Later in the track, he sent shots at a YG's affiliate named Wu Lottie, who was beaten and stabbed to death while he was allegedly spinning the block in OY territory. According to rumors, Lottie was with Shah G's when they spotted some ops. But after shots gun jammed, they had to run away on foot, and Lottie ended up tripping over the curb. That's when the ops caught up and stabbed and beat him with a trash can while Shah allegedly left him behind. Lottie's death was terrible, and he died at just 17 years old. But that didn't stop Nas from sending shots like stay with the trend and Max in the back. Call up J.O. quick to attack. Three man drill, put him on his back. Do him like Lottie, put him in the pack. Bunny in the box ran up decent numbers, so Nas started going harder in the booth. He followed it up with a couple of collab tracks which set the trend. Then dropped the song Ra Ra and said, and no, I can't go out like Ra Ra. Two shots hit him, you know he went bye bye. Outside, I was toting on my knocker. Cab got swished, then he died at the doctor's. New op in the air, but I'm still smoking on Lottie. I was outside trying to catch me a body. Then he took shots at Shy EK and D Thanks friend Delilah with EK, you a b you ain't toting on Sitchy. Delilah got shot, that's a new bunny in the box. I walk around, I keep my knock. O to the Y, then you getting shot. What's wild about the situation is that Nas knew a lot of OY and OG dudes back in the day and didn't have any issues with them. But that all changed after he started repping DOA. Nas was making a lot of noise in the streets, but the music was taking off too. He wasn't blowing up as fast as some of his homies like K-Flock, but people were definitely paying attention. Nas claims he was offered record deals too, and he allegedly turned down a massive $700,000 contract because he didn't think the deal was right. When Say Cheese interviewed him a few months ago, Nas said, I move smart, and, and like, I don't be out there just trying to do dumb shit, walking around by myself and like that, I'm moving my team. Family, driver, security, shit. Apparently, he didn't try hard enough though, cause now he's been threatening people on video and allegedly shot an op in the middle of Times Square. Instead of taking this opportunity to leave the streets behind and focus on his rap career, it looks like Nas is throwing it all away over nothing. He comes from a wild area where it's tough to break the cycle of violence, but most people never get a chance to make it out like he did. Nas claims he's innocent and he'll be home soon, but nobody knows how the situation will end up. Right now, there's only one video going around showing Sibby stumbling after the shooting, but Times Square has cameras everywhere, and it's pretty much guaranteed that at least one of them caught the whole thing. The situation isn't looking good for Nas right now, and New York is already trying to get as many drill rappers off the street as possible. Back in February, Nas homie K-Flock and seven other dudes got hit with a RICO case, and rumors say that another RICO is coming down on the OYs and the OGs. Bronx Drill has only been around for a couple years, but so many of the biggest artists in the scene are already dead or locked up. The violence is out of control, and unfortunately, at this point, it don't look like it's slowing down at all. Hopefully, new drill artists can learn how to leave the streets behind and just focus on their music, because at this rate, every drill rapper out of the Bronx is going to be dead or in prison. Rest in peace to everyone who lost their lives in this crazy beef.